Good morning and welcome to another Kerfuffle Showcase. And I'm delighted to have a full team here today looking at the Pip Vault. Uh, here today we have Tim Main, Stephen Foden and David Sandiman. Hello, gents. How are you all? Good morning. Very well, thank you. Good stuff. David, you okay? I'm excellent and thank you very much for having me on this showcase. No no problem at all. Looking very professional there, sir, with your uh, with your earphones. So that's good. And um, Tim, hello. How are you? Very good, thank you. Good morning, Simon. Good stuff. Well, set the scene for us here, Tim. Give us a give us a uh, the, the people who are tuning in now. Give us an idea of uh, what the pit vault's all about and how you came up with the idea. Uh, quite simply, three years ago, I stopped selling houses day to day, and I was frustrated by the process. It was taking too long to uh, exchange contracts. And uh, buyers and sellers were getting upset with each other during the lengthy process once the sale had been agreed. Um, and, uh, and I thought, how can we help? And I was working for a firm. We were getting uh, property information forms completed and, and conveyances appointed uh, before we accepted instruction. But we weren't using that to our client's advantage. And so I had the uh, costy, cost of coffee moment and other coffees are available and uh, with Steve Foden. Uh, a local conveyancer and said, come on, how can we make this better for people? Yeah. And uh, we talked about it a little bit and thought, well, if we're going to sort of try and display any information that we get um, the clients to put up front, uh, we need some technology. And how are we going to build that? And, uh, and Steve suddenly scratched his head and said, well, actually, there's, uh, there's a guy called David Sanderman who hosts title packs for the auction world. Yep. And so that's why we then got in touch with David. And what we've really done is we've adapted his auction technology for the private treaty market. Good stuff. And, and David, just on that subject, just give us an overview of why it does work so well in the auctions world. OK, uh, we've been providing technical services for the auctioneers for about 30 years now. Um, and since time memoriam, every time a property went to auctions, you know, way, way back, I go back to when I was buying properties at auction in 1984, um, you would spend, send 25 quid off to the auctioneer and he would send you a big package of documents, a photocopy of the documents. You'd go through, get your sister to go through that and if you're happy, you'd go and buy it. Yeah. Um, about 16 years ago, uh, we got approached by a couple of auctioneers who said, could you set up some document rooms, for, uh, document for each of the lots we offer, which we did, and, and we now provide that for about 65% of all lots going to auction. Uh, some auctioneers have their own uh, in-house system. But just to put some numbers on that, so virtually every property going to auction will have an auction pack with it, which is hopefully sufficient information to make your decision you want to buy it. And since we started, we provided um, over 200,000 document rooms, had over uh, almost 2 million people registered to look at them. And I think the last count was just over 26 million documents have been downloaded over that 16 year period. So. Um, I thought when Tim and Steve approached me, oh, this would be a five-minute job, as you always do. Uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> it, it, it did require quite a lot of work, but the underlying technology has, as I say, delivered 26 million documents for over 2 million people, um, or approaching 2 million people, and, and that's what we're using. It's a sort of variant of that. So you've got a, you've got a working sample, then, is what you're telling me. This has been so I, think, I think so, yeah. We, we got the hang of it after the first 10 million documents were delivered. <laughs> And what, David, just as a, obviously a lot of those people will have uh, will, will have gone through private treaty previously. Do, do, do you often get feedback about how different they find the process? You know? Yeah, well, two, two things. Firstly, um, the process is very much quicker. Typically, a catalogue won't come out three weeks before the auction, until three weeks before the auction. Hopefully, the legal pack will be very shortly. But they do like the fact that they can see all the legal documents they need to see and request the ones they don't, always remembering that, Sometimes the most important document is one which isn't there. Why is it there? Has it been deliberately left out? You've got to ask those questions. Yeah. But the speed and efficiency allows you that maybe within uh, 14, 21 days of seeing a property coming to auction, you are going to exchange contracts. The sale has gone through. Exchange of contracts takes place on the fall of the gavel rather than this three, four, five, six month delay that we're having in the private treaty world. I mean, the good thing is in an auction, you're not in the chain by default. Yeah, you might have a property sell, but you're in a position, and everybody must realise that on the fall of the gavel, the exchange takes place unless it's a conditional sale, which should be flagged up in the uh, in the in the uh, lot details and the legal pack. Understand, understand. Thank you. And Stephen, from your point of view, when you were sat uh, sat having that uh, that Costa uh, coffee moment, what was what 
what are the classic challenges that you, you see in place that you thought this needs to change? Yeah, typically it's it's getting documentation together at the start. You know, you, there's, there's always an inbuilt delay whenever instructed. You've got seven to ten days wasted while you're getting instructions. Then you're going out and getting information. I was involved in the home information pack market many years ago and, in fact, met David uh, when we were dealing with that. And the beauty about the auction pack is all the information is there. More particularly, and um, just some benefits of it, is that um, every time a document's added, people are notified of those additions. It's all in one place. You can download it. You don't have the problems of sending emails and emails not being received. And also it's timestamped, so you can see when people have accessed the documentation. So you don't have some of the issues that, um, that uh, go with the private treaty market of people saying, well, I've, I've sent this and the other person hasn't received it. You can actually tell whether they have sent it, whether they've received it, and they, even whether they've seen it and downloaded it. So it, it, it gives some, some real time stamp in relation to, to the product. Yeah, so that transparency can only help uh, help you know clarify matters, can't it? And absolutely, absolutely. There's no hiding places. And like what we've done with Pips, both the auctioneer and the vendor solicitor can upload documents to the document room in the auction world. And also, as an individual, if I'm looking at a property to buy, I can send a link to my solicitors and invite him in to go and have a look at documents on my behalf as well. So it sort of completes the whole circle. Got you. Understand. And Tim, I mean, on the, uh, if you go to the uh, uh, piphome.co.uk, there's a lot of information, obviously, on your website. There's a fantastic video on there that gives a really uh, good overview as well, which we're going to obviously be highlighting. The thing that jumped out for me was that three that three uh, that three point message that you know the the element that you're trying to get across helps you win more instructions, have a significantly quicker exchanges, and far less fall throughs. I mean, th those are obviously three. Uh, you know, fantastic taglines to have. Just talk us through talk, talk us through those. When I first started discussing this with agents, one agent said to me, you know, quicker exchange would be great, but I've taken the pain in the cash flow to some extent. And so it'll be a one-off windfall if, if exchanges come in a bit. Um, but he was more uh, excited on his bottom line for the uh, reducing the fall-throughs. Yeah. And so why do we think fall-throughs should, should uh, reduce? The simple thing is, A, quicker exchanges. The longer a property takes to exchange, we know it takes longer to, uh, more likely to fall through. Um, but, but also, it reduces fall throughs because the buyers can see this information before they offer. So yeah. the buyer is better informed, therefore better quality offers come in, they're more likely to get to the end of, uh, end of the process. Um, and certainly, uh, if you raise this with individual uh, sellers, they love the idea that they can do something to help speed up the process. They don't understand the whole process. There's a bit of a myth behind conveyancing. But if you talk to any of them and say, you can complete these forms early, you can go and find in your attic your damp brief guarantee, and you can put it in a site where it's, everyone can then find it. They love the idea that they can do something straight away to help their sale. There, there, there were some uh, staggering uh, results from a survey I saw uh, just a while ago about what the public actually, what their impression was of how long it took to, 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 to move and everything else. And they just thought it was, you know, I think the majority said it was less than a month or something in, in, in their minds to do it. How well informed or misinformed do, do you think that the public actually are at the moment in terms of, do they, do they literally react with shock when they realise how long it, it's actually going to take the whole process? I think there's often disappointment. Um, I, I don't think anyone expects it to be to be you know, done the same day. Apart from there was a lovely story of, of, of someone who went into a, to a London agent, a younger generation went in, uh, saw a flat they liked, went and viewed it, offered on it at lunchtime, and um, and rang up that afternoon to hit this, to say that they hadn't heard any feedback or you know the offer was accepted at lunchtime, um, yeah. haven't, haven't heard anything about the thing. Is it ready to to, to sign yet? So. Um, I think the expectations of the younger generation who are used to instant access on the internet is, is gonna, gonna sort of slowly change the whole marketplace. Um, they're, all, they're all waiting for the Uber to arrive in the next three minutes, aren't they? And that's their, that's, as so often, we're, we are unfairly judged against other industries uh, and services, aren't we? That's right, that's right. And I don't think instant exchange would be right for the marketplace, but I think somewhere in the, in the few weeks would be right to exchange and completion 
you know, I, I personally would actually prefer to see slightly longer completions than the average week nowadays, because it doesn't give you much time to pack the house up and, and make arrangements. Um, but yeah, an overall process of a few months, I think, should be the target rather than the many months that, that it is now. Good stuff. Okay, and 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 what's um, what do what do give us the feedback again from the from, from the buyer's point of view? What's their feedback on the whole on, on the whole process? They just like being better informed. That's right. I mean, uh, as an estate agent, some of the words you hate to hear is, "Oh, we're pulling out." If only we'd known. You know that there was a covenant, or there was a footpath across the back garden, or those sort of very basic de details, which possibly the agents, uh, estate agents, details don't include. Uh, but if the buyers can see that sort of information, they know what they're buying more. Simon, I know I'm sure you're a trader of cars, and uh, you like your your classic cars and things. You're not going to buy a second-hand car without looking at the logbook, are you? You're going to see the information right. about it before you even start mentioning a price. To, to, to buy it at. Um, but a house, you go and negotiate the price down to the last penny, then you go and find out what you're buying. Yes, it yes, seems a bit right. backwards. So all we're trying to do is, and we're not putting any information in the pit vault at the moment, we're just providing a, a, a data room. Uh, Ed Mead, who might join us in a minute, you know, he calls it a bucket. Just think of it as a simple bucket, and the seller, the estate agent, and the conveyancer can put information in there and as Stephen said, you know, everyone's updated as, as to the latest documents and that sort of thing once, they're, once they've seen it once. Uh, but they put that information in and the buyers through a, a, a link that the estate agent can put in their details or on their website whenever they advertise the property uh, can go and see that information. Um, just talk us through uh, as well what the actual process is from the agent's point of view actually getting this this all set up. Is it, is it easy, first of all, onboarding with you and then the individual... Uh, setting up for the individual uh, the individual sale. Talk us through that, the actual, uh, the, the kind of operational side of things. Well, we very much structured this to be to be driven by the estate agent because I believe the agent is the is the energy in the deal and still has the control of it and, and the drive uh, to make some of these deals happen. So agents can go to our, our, our homepage, uh, www.pithome.co.uk. And from there, they can, uh, can uh, register, uh, which is a simple form to complete. And then when that registration process is, is completed, which is uploading their logo and a few contact details, that sort of thing. Uh, once that's complete, they can then open a pit vault for every property they bring to the market um, directly from their, from their uh, account there. Okay. And how do you advise agents to sell this to, the, to their own clients? Do you give them advice in terms of how best to structure they, that conversation or um, are they left to kind of uh, sort out the best messaging themselves? We, we, we've got various videos that they can, can send to the seller or, or point the, the, the seller to. Um, but it's quite a simple uh, thing saying, we're opening this for you. There's not a big cost involved. Um, uh, it's a success only fee that we charge the estate agent. Um, but when they're talking to their seller, it's quite simple saying, if we open this for you, um, you'll get an invitation to, to access it. We then send the seller their legal form, their TA6 form or whichever uh, form uh, they want to use at that stage. So they can start completing that on day one of marketing when the estate agent opens the pit vault, rather than the current process, they'd only start doing that once the sales agreed, once they'd appointed a conveyancer, then they'd get the legal form to complete. Uh, and so we're trying to bring that part of the process right to the beginning. Okay. And David, from your point of view, what would what would you be saying to uh, traditional agents about uh, about the about the pit vault now? What why why they should be looking at this? Well, uh, firstly, I've seen the the without legal documents up front, properties would not exchange at auction. That's the first point. Some of the comments I've had from estate agents where I've talked, been talked to them, you know, in the pub or whatever, say, "Well, you know, my buyers wouldn't have the nouse to know how to read an office copy entry or or release or things like that. They might not." But I think every single buyer could read a fixtures and fittings form to see whether the bench in the garden's coming with it. They could read the TA6 and see whether there's been a neighbour's dispute. They might even be able to look at a lease plan which will outline the garden. And at least they're engaged with understanding what they're buying rather than just glibly relying on the pictures on the website and a brief description. You know, there's a lot of underlying stuff which, when it comes out in the wash, causes 
deals to fall out of bed and they had it been addressed from day one said this is what you're buying and, and explain then i think we'd have a, a a lot more properties going through quicker and a lot less time to achieve that it's it's, it's the information there so buyers will all get some degree of value out of the documents they can see you know when they might wonder when there's a boiler's last service well that document could be in there it was it properly installed and signed off all those things they need to know about because when they have a survey done the auction, the surveyor may well be asking that you know, looks like they've had a new boiler check it i've already checked that yeah, that's a week saved that's mm -hmm. you know all these little bits of time is what's going to bring it down to maybe a month six weeks exchange rather than oh we're waiting for the gas certificate you know it's been on the market for eight weeks somebody's asked for it the plumber's not around and can't provide it and then you're scrapping around with the gas safe registry trying to get a replacement document which is you know just a proof of 60 quid's worth of work was done and it's holding up not just your transaction but everyone above and below it's as simple as that having a mindset to get these documents up front will take so much stress and strain that you know steve spends a huge amount of his time chasing documents well, yeah this is what the pitfall do do you have documents listen and just start putting them in the moment you you, you sign on the dotted line I would be putting, filling out the TA6, fixtures and fittings, and getting all the easy documents, the guarantees, you know. Um, and, and Simon, I, I, I can endorse that because I've, I've been operating PIP within the, the, the business of our conveyancing practice here. And um, particularly buyers are seeing documentation ahead of when their, solicitor, their own solicitor's conveyances are even opening up the documentation. Mm. And that actually, it's, it's putting them in an informed position in terms of what they're seeing and the questions they ask and the issues that they want to raise with their own solicitors. I've got one particularly at the moment where there's, where, where there's a lease and there's an issue about whether they want a dog in there or not. Well, normally they'd only raise that particular point once the solicitor reported to them at the point of exchange of contracts on the lease documentation. Well, what's actually happened in this case is they've raised that on day one, the, the issue's been resolved and it's actually been dealt with between the estate agent, the seller and the buyer. They've agreed the terms and then they've presented it to the solicitors as a fait accompli, as an agreement as to what's happened, rather than the buyer solicitor raising it with the seller solicitor, who then asks the seller, who then refers it back to the buyer's conveyance, who then refers it back to the buyer. It just shortens the whole process. So just that transparency has, has, has speeded up the conveyancing process without a doubt. And that's really important. And I think a lot of people have been talking about the huge stress that conveyance has been under, obviously, this year, haven't they? And are never more so, obviously, in this run up to the stamp duty uh, deadline and everything else. Else, there does this. Uh, does this? It sounds from what you're saying, it does offer a solution to at least reducing that uh, that, that that workload, at least, and putting it into a much more proceduralized uh, approach, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the uh, requirements of a seller's conveyancer is to review the documentation before it's dispatched. Now, dare I say it, that may not happen as, as often as it should do. But in reality, if the documentation is uploaded by the seller, uh, by the seller's conveyancer, you're already seeing a complete pack of documentation. So you're reducing the questions that are going to come in saying, I haven't got this, I haven't got this. Can you chase it and do this? Can you do that? Uh, and, and, and therefore, every time, as I said earlier on, documentation is updated, it's automatically, everybody gets an email to say documentation has been <laughs> uploaded. And conveyances are under a huge amount of stress at the moment. You know, there are several going off with stress. We're getting emails from people saying, sorry, this person's not in here. They've gone off with stress. Now, I guess that's probably related at this moment in time to our stamp duty deadline on the 30th of June. Um, but the reality of the situation is anything that can stop the paper shuffling that goes yeah. into the conveyancer's office, uh, the better the process is going to be and the more transparent it is. And if everybody can see a timeline as to, yes, the seller's conveyance had downloaded this on this date, the buyer's conveyance had downloaded it on this date, these are the inquiries that came in, those are the replies that went back. There's a lot less chasing that has to go on as well because the estate agent can log on and he can see, right, okay, I can see inquiries were raised on this date. I can see the buyer's conveyancer hasn't downloaded them as yet. So actually the only person I need to speak to at the moment is the buyer's conveyancer and vice versa. So it also reduces some of the workload on the estate agents by what they can see through the management tools within the process. So it's a win-win all round, basically. <laughs> I think there's also a marginal gain here in that, um, you know, I've been involved in enough transactions to know that sometimes, you know, at the door of exchange, the vent, the purchaser comes up with some spurious reason to try and chip the price. 
And it does help you say, well, hang on, it's been in the TA6 for the last six months. Why are you raising it now? And, and, and you, you can put some moral pressure on them and say, don't try this trick at this late stage because they generally had the ability to see it and they may well have inspected that document. You know, and that will happen in some cases. That's a vital point, isn't it, David? That's a really, really important one. I can well imagine, actually, as as people sort of educate the uh, the the buyers and sellers that that is the case as well. Yeah. Just to, just to, just to make sure that there isn't any of that last minute chipping. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, go back to cars. I don't think there's anybody who would go to a car dealer, make an offer on a car, and they say, "Okay, can I now see the HBI register and the logbook and the service history?" No, you look at that on the bottom of the car. It's HBI clear. It's full of stamped history. That's what I'm buying. I understand it. Why in the property world we do it the other way around, where we basically we can see the bricks and mortar and the colour of the wallpaper in the drawing room, but we can't see the underlying invisibles, which can really uh, scupper a deal. And it only happens when it's several, several weeks, months down the line. Perfect. Thank you, David. Well, as, as, as you said, Tim, we've got uh, Ed joining us in a second. Just before uh, I introduce him on uh, on to here, we have got a comment here from Robert May who just makes the point, property information packs are the key to unlocking full and proper material information and legal requirements since 2008. Properly implemented, this is a genuine opportunity to improve the industry and the transfer of properties between owners. So, Obviously, a, a big fan there from from it sounds like thanks for that Robert. Um, yes, yeah, so let's bring bring in Ed. So uh, make to make it wonderful five. How are you, Ed? Are you okay? Well, I'm very good. I've very rarely come across such a sage and intelligent looking anyway bunch of people on a call before. And so I'm pleased. I'm pleased to waiting, be here. I was waiting for the bots. You've got to go to Specsavers, Ed. I was, I, I'm pleased to be a part of it. But I have to say, I've been listening. Um, and, and again, actually, Robert May, who knows more about this than anybody, probably, in terms of the, the property information stuff, um, people always tend to talk in this, in this context about the paperwork. What no one ever has talked about in the past is somewhere to put it. I've mm. always thought, yeah, great, we don't want any paperwork. Where are we going to put it? And, and when Tim uh, first approached me quite some time ago, just for a bit of advice early on, and I've been a big supporter of, of, of this um, initiative and this product, um, it was the bit about the uh, bucket, simply looking at it. I know Tim mentioned it earlier, but the, the idea that here is somewhere at last that literally, even if you've got to pay for it, it costs pennies, 25, it, it may be naught, it may be 25 quid, depending on what deal you can strike with Tim, who's sitting mm. there for me. Um, and it just gives you somewhere to put it. I think the biggest problem for all of this is changing a state agent's mindset. I still think there's a major problem out there with the fact that agents like to put, and, uh, you know, I know that there probably aren't a huge number watching, but I su would suggest there'll be quite a lot who will watch this as a recording. I don't want to piss them off, if you'll pardon my French, but the the methodology at the moment when you're advertising a property is still to, still to, tending to put the minimum of information up front so that you persuade the people to pick up the phone and you can then sell them stuff. Yes. And I think that has to change. I just think that has to change. And it is changing with the new generation of younger agents coming through. The problem for the industry, I think, is that the vast majority of middle-aged men, well, older middle-aged men like me, who do things in the same way they've always done them, and this... This is a cheap and fantastic way to change them. So other than Peter Pan characters like myself, obviously educating the, the, the masses, Ed, what would you do to try and literally to try and bring people around on that? Or is it, as you said, is it just slowly changing anyway? Well, I think uh, I know that Tim and David and Steve are in some very interesting discussions with some of the big portals, some of the big platforms about incorporating yeah. them. And obviously the platforms at the moment are very, very keen to make their customers sticky. And from that perspective, incorporating something like this, which they can effectively do for free, um, is a massive boon. And I think once people see that they're being offered it over and over again, they're just going to think, yeah. well, why don't I do it? My biggest thing originally when, when I was approached about this was the, was, was the thing about auctions. Why on earth? I don't think people understand enough about the way auctions work. And I think what David's done is hugely impressive in terms of the information he's provided. He's been involved. He's been Mr. Auctions for 20 years and when he turned around to me and said, well, this is just auction stuff for the private treaty market, that just instantly makes sense. So for agents, to me, this is the bridge between what auctions do and what the private treaty market does. Ed, can I just come back to you on that point about the agents like the people to phone up? Uh, they want a, a, a line of communication. 
when you re when you want to look at one of the, a pitfall, you have to uh, fill out a little account form. We want name, email address, and mobile and number. And we have the option of actually verifying that mobile number, send a short code to it. So you do have a, a line a line of verbal communication with everybody who looks at a. Um, uh, Okay. Well, that's a very good point, actually, of course, because this this does give agents access to the details of who's looking at the properties in more detail, because, of mm. course, they're going to have to log. They're going to have to register to look at the information on the agent's website on the link yeah. or the portal website, whatever it is, which gives you earlier and easier access to that particular potential buyer. So that's, that's, that's the serious people. Yeah. That strength of interest, then, is, is quite easy, easy to gauge, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And I think I would suggest that that makes it a better tool. I mean, as, a, as an agent for the thick end of 40 years, the biggest problem was always, I remember at Douglas and Gordon, we had a, a thing called My Property Tracker. We were one of the earliest yeah. people that put a thing in there that said, uh, you know, this is, this is what viewing you've had. This is whatever. In other words, we were brutally honest. And actually, we, we ended up losing a few instructions because we were so honest. Mm. Other agents were just fibbing, saying we've had 50 people around in the last two weeks. And they could look on My Property Tracker and see that it, that. We'd only had five, but they were bona fide buyers, and you could see the feedback. So this is a sort of extension of that. But ultimately, ultimately, Ed, there, what that is, is, is that's the market telling, giving honest feedback, isn't it? There is no point bluffing, ultimately, in the long run, is there? If there is, if they've either got the price wrong or the photos are wrong, or what, how, whatever it is about the way it's being presented at the moment, um, ultimately, ultimately, being blind to that helps no one. No, and I mean, it's, you know, I don't want to denigrate my own industry. I really don't. But I think that the approach till now has been pretty blunt. And I think that the, you know, the fact that you can buy a property at auction on the fall of a gavel, having received the paperwork a few days before, means it should be possible in the private treaty market. It's just putting yeah. the technology together. Why the hell hasn't this happened before? And as I said, I sometimes, I've, I've, I've spoken to Tim and David and Stephen a bit over the last few months. And um, I still get angry with Tim occasionally because he bangs on about paperwork. And I keep saying, stop talking about paperwork and talk about the actual receptacle, the bucket, because we all know the paperwork's necessary, but no one else does this bucket. And I think that's what's so important. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Tim. No, and there's two aspects to that bucket as well, isn't it? On that on that withdrawal rate element as well. We work so hard to get this stuff in at the top end of the uh, uh, end of the bucket, and then it all just leaks out of the bottom. Uh, Josh Fegan always makes the point. He's I know he's got into businesses before now, and it, and they've got him in on prospecting training courses for his teams, and then he's delved into their withdrawal numbers. I said, what am I bothering for? So, solve that before you you know you even start worrying about this this top end of the stuff. Absolutely, you know, keep 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 the funnel narrower and and make sure that the people who are in it stay there. And, and Robert, Robert jumps in here to make the point as well. Show agents how to lift their conversion rates from fifty to seventy percent, and you'll get their attention. Well, that's <laughs> absolutely on the money there. Sorry, David, I just yeah. Well, one way the auctioneers are, are using the uh, knowledge as to who's looked at what is um, all the all the auctions are effectively online now, and you have to register to bid. And so we got auctions happening every day. We host quite a few of them. And an auctioneer can see as the lot comes up, he can see who's registered to bid. And he also got a record to how many documents they've looked at. You know, did they actually open them and download them? And it's, it's a correlation between those who are serious bidders and those who've actually looked in the um, to, to looked at the documents. And it'd be the same for an estate agent. He's got a couple of people buying for the property. It's competitive. Well, the one who's studied the documents may well be a better bet than the one who hasn't and can advise his, his client, his vendor uh, on that point. And yeah, to say, and essentially that that is showing the strength of interest there. And in Australia, I know the underbidders are the very next people you go to, aren't they? In terms of uh, you know, if you haven't managed to satisfy them at that particular one, where you work through those underbidders or those that have the strength of interest as uh, as the as the next most uh, potential uh, buyers, don't you? Um, I do think it's indicative of the way this can work. Um, you've only got to look at the people on the call. Tim was an estate agent for a long time. Steve is a solicitor, and David's on the auction side. What on earth do you? What else do you need? No, uh, you know that's that. That's all you need to get this right. Steve's been, I know, has been road testing this. And would it be fair to say, Steve, that it's made your life easier? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, without a shadow. Uh, yeah. Both from just from the information flow and from actually seeing who's who's looking at documentation at what time and where any delay in transaction is and who you need to chase to reduce and remove that delay and uh, th well hang on Simon. before you go on i just wanted to say there you have it that's a solicitor he's not allowed to lie 
all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, which gives me a perfect segue because I can. But, uh, Stephen, is there anyone in your profession that will have any kickback against this, do you think? Or will it be, uh, uh, will it be uh, overwhelmingly well-received? Um, I, I, I guess, like anything, people don't like change. You know, when home information packs came through, lots of people were objecting to them. They didn't like them. Um, but, you know, you look back on it now and there's a lot of people in there saying, actually, they weren't, it wasn't a bad idea. You know, there was information there. It was available. Um, but those people who uh, basically don't want to get the job done are quite happy to stay in their old ways, let transactions take as long as they can. You know, the whole um, the whole conveyancing process is a reactive process. A piece of paper lands on your desk, you deal with it. Um, you know, this this makes it proactive. You get out there, you can see what's going on. People can chase where delays are. They can sort things out. Information is put in there up front. Um, it's not a case of I'm sending paperwork out to the seller, the seller's then returning it. I'm sending it to the buyer, they're then returning it. You know, it's instantaneous. It's there, it's done. It, it, uh, and then people can deal with that as quickly or as slowly mm -hmm. as they want to. So, yeah, there will be there will be some objection to it for sure because it's changed and nobody likes change. Is that my yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm 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 50, 58 now. You know, the reality. Sorry, what's the earlier on? Sorry, it was, was that was that you, Tim? Sorry, not sure who that was. I don't think so. <laughs> I think Simon, we've been one, hacked, uh, Simon. one thing we didn't point hacked. out earlier on. I think we've been hacked, Simon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the reality of the situation is if somebody of my age is prepared to say, right, this is the way to do it. This is how we can progress. You know, it's it's a, a further development from where home information packs were. You know, there's a there's a willingness. If you read, you know, if you speak to industry at the moment throughout solicitors, agents, they want to change. There is a willingness to change. And, and now's the time to grasp it and get on with it. Where did, where did, where did hips go? Uh, government abolished them. Um, there was too much uh, pressure from various interested groups in terms of protecting their monopoly, I think, to a certain degree. And, um, you know, political pressure got the better of it and Labour government abolished it at the time. Um, but, you know, there was a lot of good good stuff left over from that. They, everything wasn't perfect for sure. Um, but, you know, it was, it was a good attempt. And, um, you know, this is really where the industry now, you know, 15, 20 years later is, is saying, actually, it wasn't so bad. We do need this information. Let's get it. And, you know, 15, 20 years later on, there's a lot more information that's available on the net that can be downloaded. Searches are coming back a whole heap quicker. You know, if I do a search today, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get the majority of the searches back within an hour. Uh, you know, local searches, which are taking 28 more time. Some are coming back within seven days. OK, some are taking longer, but everything is moving towards speeding up that process. Thanks, Stephen. And, 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 uh, sorry, just to say, Steve might have a good um, go on on this and not lie, but he needs to be on mute, I think, because his sound system is clearly it's crap. crap. <laughs> there we go. Go on, Stephen. Yeah, Simon, one thing we didn't cover earlier on is agents yep. uh, invite the conveyances in. So we don't have a yep. panel or whatever. We encourage agents to use their existing contacts uh, wherever they are to use the system. So it's available to everyone. We don't restrict um, to panels and things. That's good. And and, and and that once you've got that link, Tim, just talk us through. So you can put it on the website. You can put it in brochures. I mean, essentially, uh, any, any anywhere digitally, essentially, you can have that link back to it, I, I assume. That's right. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's open. I mean, it's open to uh, agents' imagination there where they can put it there afterwards. So uh, we're obviously hoping it will be able to get uploaded to the portals. Uh, but but certainly, uh, and emails to to viewings should always check that they've seen that information uh, in, in my book, so that anyone viewing the property has seen that information before they actually go around. And certainly, my old. And certainly, I can. Uh, I can. Uh, I was just going to say, my old mob at Repit. There was so a, URL, there was a URL link you could put the you could you, you could essentially use this for the for the pit vault itself, and I'm sure many of the other CRMs have that already uh, that capability already, don't they? Exactly where we're looking to work at the moment. Yeah. Okay. That's that's good. And Robert, just uh, Robert's uh, obviously. Uh, 
busy today. <laughs> Robert, uh, UPRN uh, has made this, the collaboration between specialist service suppliers possible and simple there. So that's the unique property reference, isn't it? Well, I think it has made a big difference, actually, because um, one of the things we've been doing at Viewber is that we, every person who, each of our viewers that goes to do a viewing on report actually gets us, at the moment, they get a sprift report um, yeah. available to look at everything, which which obviously does quite a lot of the stuff which would be useful and would go into a pit vault. Um, and that has been made so much easier by having the UPRNs. It's made such a difference being able mm -hmm. to have one one reference which tells you exactly which property it is, particularly with so much new build stuff coming up. I mean, you know, that, that that's clearly a, a big advantage. Yeah, that's helpful. So given, I mean, this just seems like such an obvious no brainer. What am I missing? What are the, apart from that mindset challenge here, what, what, what do you feel Tim is going to be, or anyone here, what do you think is going to be the main challenge for, for, for getting this out there? It's the status well, we quo. I agree with you generally that, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's change. It's just slowly getting people to change their habits. And, and getting the vendor from day one to buy into the fact that he's instructed the agent, or even before he instructs the agent, when he's thinking about it, just get the documentation out. He's missing forms, get those in, start on the TA6 and the fixtures and fittings, and, and maybe consider put, putting a search in the pack as well. All the things which delay it down the road once the offer's been accepted. Take I the mean, uncertainty out of it. For the, for the estate agents watching this, of course, what they always want to do when they're sitting on the sofa and trying to win business is to differentiate themselves from their competition. Yeah. And if you can sit on the sofa and say, here's something I'm going to give you. It's free. I can give it to you right now. You can start putting your white goods guarantees. You can start putting your garden guarantees, your damp proof guarantees in it straight away. Buyers will be better informed. I bet so. I bet none of the other agents you're talking to are going to offer you that. What do you think of that? They're going to go, well, it's a it's a simple plus one and it's free. So it's it's a very good way, I think, to differentiate yourself yourself from the opposition as an estate agent. I think that's one thing. But as I think I said earlier, I do think, like with anything, like we've been doing with, with Viewer, anything you want to do, you have to try and get on with the platforms. You know, your old mob, however difficult it can sometimes be to get with them, um, mm. and the other CRM systems, it's a, it's a very, very difficult thing because you're, you're talking to about 50 or 60 of them. But I think the biggest argument or the biggest difficulty with any tech, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, is getting the agents to, uh, to change and to, to, to try it. As far as I can see, this is a no-brainer. So I, I rather agree with you. You, got, you, you, you make the, the, the spot on point there as an early adopter, just to have that point of difference, though. You're always looking to stand out from the crowd, aren't you? So why, why would you not go for something like this to make that point? Yeah. So, so, Tim, talk us through again, just in terms of the commercials, where you're at at the moment and where it will be going forwards. Uh, basically, we've said that uh, any pit vault opened by the uh, end of September this year is free for its life. And our model is very much based on success there afterwards anyway. So that uh, if, if a property is withdrawn or doesn't sell for some reason, there's no charge. We charge on a successful exchange uh, and the current price is £25 uh, plus VAT to the agent uh, on a success. Excellent. Thanks for clarifying that. And just on a, on, a, on a sort of procedural point there, Tim, how do they know they're looking at the latest documents? Well, uh, every, every document uh, has a date alongside it saying who's updated it. So there's, there's, there's absolute clarity as to where the information's come from. But then if, if a document is amended or changed, anyone who's been in to see that and the agent and the solicitors involved are notified that there is a new document there. So everyone is kept absolutely updated that uh, if, if there is a change to the documents, uh, they receive an email with a link to that document. So they don't actually have to come to the site to see that document. They can, through their password, just download that document, uh, uh, the refreshed document immediately. So where do you, where do you hope this, this is going to go, uh, apart from obviously across the entire industry? Where, how do you see this developing over the course of the next year or so? Well, I think um, I mean, I'm talking to, uh, to, 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 to logbook companies as well, and there's no doubt about it. There's a huge push to start to get this information going forwards and things. And I think as, as buyers start to hear about it as well, they'll be asking to see this information as much as, uh, as sellers wanting to, 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 to give it and put it forward. So, um, you know, we certainly anticipate um, you know, num num you know, significant increase in numbers uh, over the next two years. 
Excellent. Okay. So critical, the, the, the main takeaways I'm looking at this in terms of there. First of all, it, it's based on obviously the, uh, you know, tried and tested. David's been doing this for the best part of uh, de decades, as he said, with millions and millions of these uh, documents having already been done. So, you know, there is that slight conceptual thing, but it, it, it's actually proven to work is, is the main element. It's incredibly simple to, uh, to use uh, from what you, you were telling us about that. Can obviously can only help uh, with quicker exchanges and that critical point of fewer, fewer fall through. So you've got a nice triple whammy there, haven't you? Which is always nice, nice to see. We certainly believe so, and, and the feedback from the, from those agents using it uh, absolutely correlates with that. And where where are you up to just in terms of Tim? In terms of is it out being used in the wild now? Is it literally just coming off the shelf now uh, for estate agents? No, we launched uh, at the end of last year, and any agent can go to our to our website and register directly there, or contact us directly, whichever they prefer. But it, it, it's live and there and ready to be used. Excellent. Okay, so guys, uh, just closing statements here. Then, so uh, if I could just ask each of you the the point about again why you feel that this this is impo important, Stephen, from your point of view, would you just summarise again from the uh, from from the conveyancing point of view? Yeah, the documentation is held in one place, downloadable, updatable, um, transparent, available to all parties, and everybody has clarity and certainty of what they're seeing. Superb. Superb and succinct. I like that. David, from your point of view? Well, having uh, monitored and reported on every virtually every auction for the last 30 years, uh, all those sales have taken place with the background of the documents required for the sale to take place being in place prior and uh, it just works in the in the auction industry and it will work very very well in the private treaty market as well and awesome. and is working well now thank you david thank you uh, ed from your point of view you're just on mute i think quite right I, it's just cheap and it's a differentiator so from that perspective that's that's why i've been giving these guys a bit of help i think it's a, it's a game changer very simple like the best things in life it's always simple Lovely. And I think just before I come back to you, Tim, I mean, obviously, again, always go and have a look at the uh, landing pages. Look, Have a look at PIP on kerfuffle.com. Have a look what their clients are saying about it. And it is five uh, five star rated. I love I love the uh, there's Mark Wigan here for Mark Wigan Estate Agents. Just simple and succinct again. What's not to like? I think we've said that a couple of times on here. Uh, Matthew Gardner, uh, Leg from Hardingree. Uh, it's brilliant. The pit vault works for everyone. The seller, the buyer, the estate agent and conveyances. It's brilliant. Just to get a bit far show there, but still wonderful to hear that, <laughs> to hear that sort of feedback. And then Mike Nettleton, a man who knows a little bit about dealing with volume and everything else there over at Knock Dayton. Excellent. I absolutely love this product. So great to hear that kind of testimony. Obviously, must be must be nice to feel that validated, Tim, when you were sat there all those moons ago having your Costa Coffee moment. Absolutely. I, I, I like to add to that little list that uh, I sold my house using a pit vault. And I'm pleased to say I looked the buyer in the eye when we agreed the uh, agreed the price. And I said, it's on the basis of all the information in the pit vault. And two, two weeks and a day later, uh, we had an exchange of contracts. So yes, I was fortunate to find a cash buyer, but that buyer hadn't bought a house for 25 years. They hadn't appointed a conveyancer when they agreed the deal. Uh, and they did manage a week's holiday in America uh, in the meantime. So you know, it, despite that, they, they did achieve it in just over two weeks. So knowing that information does help. I think what's really going to be fascinating about this, Tim, is where we're going to start hearing, you know, we all, I, I make the point repeatedly here, and look, it's vital that we do get the feedback from the agents themselves, obviously, about why they like particular suppliers. But often what's overlooked is what it's actually delivering for the agent's own clients. And, and you're going to hear more and more of those stories, aren't you? And, and, and obviously, we'd be absolutely mad to ignore that. You know, why would you not want to have that positivity being fed back? And there's a lot of pain and frustration in those 21, 23 weeks, whatever people quote nowadays, between exchange, you know, agreeing a sale and, and exchange. There's a lot yeah. of personal pain and, and frustration. Famously, time kills deals, doesn't it? And that's mm. that, you know that that's just what one other element. The more time that's going on, the more stuff that can go wrong. So, by definition, uh, transparency and speed. I, I can't think of an industry where you know it has hasn't worked. 
Um, I think I, I, I should say we've had five wonderful panellists uh, here today, except I've included myself in there, which is a bit too heavy. <laughs> uh, Robert May is the unofficial uh, uh, six, uh, six one here, and he makes the point again to addresses the reason why a sale might fall through as early as possible. That's, you know, absolutely spot on. And he certainly seems to have enjoyed it. We've loved having your feedback as well, Robert. Thank you for that. Brilliant podcast. Well done. Thank you. If that's all to be said, as I said, uh, anyone can go to the that landing page. And if you click, I'm interested, contact you. We will, of course, pass on all your details to Tim and he will pick up the conversation. For today, gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time to educate us all here. Obviously, it'd be great to catch up in a few months, Tim, and see, see some of those real world stories again. We'll keep in touch. Thank you very much, Simon. So for today, just let me say thank you, Stephen, David, Ed and Tim and Robert himself. Thank you all and have a good day. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Simon.